Hey guys, so I've been editing a wedding this week, surprise, surprise, where I used the Zoom H6 quite a lot. Uh, it was quite a big wedding, they had live bands on all day, uh, so they wanted um, those capturing, but I also wanted really high quality recording so I could integrate that into the wedding film, give it the atmosphere of what it was like to be there. And yeah, the tool that I chose to take along was the Zoom H6. If you're not familiar with the Zoom H6, it's the biggest of the uh, Zoom handheld recorders. Um, so it'll do stereo, it's got line-ins, it does kind of everything that the small recorders do, plus a whole lot more. We decided to add the Zoom H6 to our kit about just over a year ago. The primary thing we wanted was to be able to get a line in and get a reliable feed from uh, XLR and from TRS from like a DJ mixer for during the speeches for a backup. And it was just a bonus that it included uh, mic capsules and we could use it to record ambient as well. But it's become pretty indispensable to be honest, but it's actually become our primary source when we just need a top quality stereo recording. I'll try and include some audio from the H6 uh, from the wedding in this review. So this is the H6, I'll try and show you that. As you can see, it's fairly substantial. Uh, you can see the size in my hand there. Uh, it's a lot bigger than like the H1 and H2 recorders. It's a hell of a lot bigger than the Sony TX650 recorders that we use. And it's certainly monstrous compared to the little Instamic, which I'm wearing there. The bare bones unit is essentially a six track recorder. On the sides, you've got four XLR inputs and they're, they're combi jacks as well, so you can use a TRS balanced and unbalanced. Uh, and it's also got a proprietary dock port on there for the microphone capsules. Now, I didn't buy it to use these mic capsules particularly, but I actually love them. The preamps in this thing are absolutely fantastic. It's quite a low noise floor, so you get really quiet recordings. Compared to the old H4 and the H5, these preamps are kind of super quiet. Now, I come from an audio engineering background, so my criterion for what a quiet preamp is, is quite high, but I love these. Features of the H6, you can record either just a stereo feed from the microphones inbuilt, or you can record independently to any of uh, the tracks, and they've all got their own independent gain control, pads and you get nice VU metering on the, uh, quite a big screen down here and you get that per channel so you can see it just like on a real mixer um, where you're clipping where you're not where your levels are at and you've got nice big easy access stop start record and the track enable push buttons up here rather than having to go into menus you can actually do everything that you need to do on a kind of live recording job right from the front panel here and it's super easy it's pretty easy to see even in quite low light because uh, they're nice white paint on black buttons which I approve of greatly. Another thing I like about this is that it's not easy to switch off um, you have to kind of press and hold here I uh, can see it coming on you can see the size of the screen. Yeah, just give you a close up of that screen on. So it's nice and clear. You've got proper channels. You've got um, pan per channel as well. So you can see everything you need to um, in line in each channel, just on the front of the unit, which is absolutely brilliant. You can also see your uh, recording format. Um, I normally have it set up at uh, 48 kilohertz, 24 bit in WAV because why not? I want the best quality. And even though I'm outputting 16 bit, I like to have the dynamic range to play with. So what do you get with the H6? You get this rather nice hard case, uh, which is foam lined inside as well. You get a foam windshield, which is really handy for when you're recording outdoors. Um, you get the mid side microphone capsule uh, with a gain control on the actual capsule. So you don't, uh, lose control from the other channels. You can uh, record that in stereo and control all four extra channels simultaneously. And you also get an XY capsule as well. And the angle of the capsules is actually variable between 90 and 120 degrees. So you've got a lot of control over your stereo image there. Another thing that I love about this unit is if you're doing pure stereo recording, um, for example, orchestral music or uh, bigger groups, string quartets, and you want a couple of options in post, what you can actually do is you can get an internal recording uh, via the XY capsule or the mid side, and then you can set up an extra pair of microphones such as Rode NT5s in a spaced pair. And then you've got the option to see later 
what has the best stereo separation, spatialization, etc. So it's a bit like recording in B format, but a real kind of dirt cheap solution to it. I mean, this and a capsule and a pair of NT5s and a couple of XLR cables, it fits into a tiny shoulder bag and it's a kind of one and done solution. And because the preamps are so clean, you can use this as an audio interface to record in from a condenser microphone for kind of Foley use, for voiceovers, anything you want this will do it. It's powered by four AA batteries. You actually get a set included with the unit, which I find quite impressive. And it records onto standard SD card media, uh, which loads into a dedicated flap in the side. And the battery compartment is underneath. And it's got a nice kind of uh, ribbon, so you can pop all the batteries out at once, so you don't have to fiddle about. So if you're in a rush and you just need to reload the batteries in there, no problem at all. It's quite a nice kind of almost rubberized finish to it. It does mark on the corners quite easily and the screen needs a screen protector on it which I didn't bother to do and I quite regret that but it doesn't affect the functionality of it at all. It just gets a little tatty a little easier than the kind of all plastic shiny things like the uh, Zoom H1 and that kind of thing. Now for weddings I find it a little cumbersome to carry around in the case because if I've got my camera bag with me and I'm just kind of taking it around with me, I don't want one big extra thing to carry at the same time. So what I normally do is I pick a capsule for the day, usually the mid-side, and then I have a pouch which came with the Lower Pro BP450. This with the capsule on fits perfectly into the pouch. I can zip that off and then I can Velcro it to the the outside of one of my other bags. So that's all I've got to carry. And then when I want to use it, I just unzip and I'm set up ready to go. I can place that wherever I want. So that is kind of my solution to not using the hard case and all the accessories when I know I'm not going to use everything at once. Now features aside, if it doesn't sound good, then there's no point using it. But this thing sounds fantastic. It's some of the best preamps I've seen in a kind of little unit like this. They are super quiet. They are quite detailed. The stereo imaging from the inbuilt capsules is really quite impressive. It doesn't have the kind of clarity or the bottom end of using like a real pair of like ships omnis but it is literally six times cheaper than just those microphones it is improved by using external microphones and the preamps are good but the point is you've got that inbuilt and so if it's not absolutely critical and you just need to get something recorded it's absolutely sensational. We have the Zoom H1, which we've been using for a couple of years. The quality on this is noticeably better. Now, the downsides are the battery life isn't that great because it's got so many channels, because it's running decent preamps, because it's got phantom power in it, because it's running this screen that you can run monitoring from it as well. It's running a condenser capsule pretty much all the time when it's on. So it does go through batteries quite quickly. So if you're recording something really long, I always freak out about the batteries. Even with freshly charged Panasonic NL loops, I maybe get an hour and a half out of it if I'm lucky. The other negative is during weddings, this isn't that discreet to hide. If you need to put this on like a registrar table at the front of the ceremony, it's pretty big and obtrusive. If you need to put this on a table, kind of top table during speeches, it's pretty big, it's pretty obtrusive, and it scares people. That's what I don't like about kind of the big equipment. When someone's already nervous about doing a speech and you put this giant recorder in front of them, they're like, oh my God, I can't do this. Whereas if you get something really, really tiny, like a Sony TX650, a Zoom H1, it looks like a toy and you can just put it down Nobody even sees it, no problem at all. So yeah, that's the reason why I don't tend to use that all the time. It's just when we need a really high quality stereo signal, like recording bands, live acts, that kind of thing, and getting kind of atmosphere and atmospheric noises, which it absolutely excels at. But for a one and done solution for wedding audio, I don't actually think after a year's use that this is it. Yeah, I would like to get to the point where I resign the bigger pieces of equipment to situations where I'm filming for a specific purpose. And for run and gun situations like weddings, leave all the big gear at home and just use the tiny 
kind of waterproof, go anywhere, indestructible gear that we're starting to kind of see now. So I'll leave you with a bit of a recording that I did at the wedding. It is a live band. I didn't actually film a behind the scenes of the setup, unfortunately. I was about 20 feet out, pointing straight into the center of the band. I had the mid-side capsule. Uh, gain was up about seven out of 10. I had the windshield on. Uh, it doesn't really fit on the mid-side capsule that well, but if you jam it on, it, it does an all right job. Gain was set pretty high. They were playing outside, mostly acoustic. A couple of them were mic'd up, so it's a real mixture of the amped and the ambient sound, so a challenge for any recording environment. Because it's outside, some of the low frequencies are lost. However, I think it did an admirable job. It sounds great. The highs are really detailed. There's enough kind of mid-range there to add some punch. Once I start editing it properly, I'm sure I'll be able to get a bit more out of the low end as well. But it really kind of adds to the atmosphere. It's a very balanced recording. There's nothing kind of unbalanced. There's no boomy bass. There's no shrill highs. It is just a really nice source recording. And I'm going to put it up there with zero editing so you can see what you get out of the box straight out of this with the inbuilt capsule just on a stand. Just set it up and press record and that's it. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you're thinking of getting the Zoom H6 or you want to see the full spec because it is massive and I don't have time in like a 10 minute video to go through the entire spec with you. But check out the link below. I'll put a link to it on Amazon. They've got the full spec. So if you'd like this review, let me know in the comments. Give it a like. I really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel so you can keep up to date with uh, all the unboxings, the long term reviews and the how to's that I've got coming up. And I'll see you next time. See you later, guys. Mm -hmm.